Pastor, I even spoke to you. What are you talking about? Because someone said it to me. Who said it to me? Cross. So it's cross that started it. So when he said it, hey! Okay, let me have my own opinion about you. Okay, I have a question. I have my opinion about you. Is that you don't have sense? Imagine someone telling you, my opinion about you is that you don't have sense. <laughs>
I came into the house to enjoy myself. According to Angel, she actually took Maria for who she was, but Maria did not take her for who she was. And guys, I can kind of understand why it was kind of difficult to even understand Angel whilst in the house because, hey, we had this conversation a million times over. Yes, Angel was given dual personality in that house. One minute she's complaining about mental health, one minute she's complaining about one million and one things about her, her emotions, her feelings, her own personal things. And the next minute, Angel is heavily flirting with guys. Whenever there's a truth or their game, Angel was busy kissing a lot of people in the house. One minute she's crying about her boyfriend that she lost. The next minute, you see her doing all what not, you know, jumping from one guy to the other. So Angel was giving a lot of conflicting personalities in that house. And so that was what kind of, you know, engineered that kind of um, gossip session about her i mean she did the same thing with jackie b yes and even though she and jackie b were kind of really really close the closeness did not really last because she also made a move on michael guys and jackie b even though she was playing hard to get with michael at that point in time jackie b did not find it funny at all so it was a situation of angel not being a friend of any of the females in the house like that like that the only should i say almost close friend that she had was actually Aaron, but sadly, Aaron had been evicted earlier from the game. So the argument was so intense, guys. At some point, I could not really even hear what both of them were saying because none of them was actually waiting for the other person to speak. Yes, Erica was actually asking Maria questions, but Angel was not allowing Maria to land. Angel was not allowing Maria to speak. Angel was just basically interjecting, interjecting, just speaking over Maria's head. At some point, it was quite exhausting to watch because we could not really hear anything anymore that they were talking about. But then, Ebuka had moved on to ask Peace, yes, about a perception about Angel at that point in time, yes, because of the conversation that they had had in the executive lounge. And according to Peace, she had actually been feeling bad for Sammy. If you all cast your mind back, to that night that Angel and um, Sammy, they had actually quarreled, I think because of KV somehow. I mean, if you all cast your mind back to the truth of their game that they have played, KV was new in the house and Angel had played that game, of course. We all agreed that she was playing that game. But then she had made a move on KV. She had picked up KV and she had kissed him. And that has sort of made Sammy jealous, right? So Angel's line of defense was that, oh, uh, after all, Queen was also new in the house and Queen had also trekked on sammy so it was kind of like ticked for tat so why was sammy upset that was the night they had a heated argument that um people were angry that oh sammy had actually body shamed angel you know that kind of thing so peace was the only housemate sort of that had taken sammy's side not like supporting him outrightly but had actually taken him aside to give him a listening ear because of the way the whole thing played out that night everybody was on angel's side everybody was coming down angel you know taking a side but people were not really paying attention to what really had hurt sammy so that was peace's line of argument that listen everybody almost everybody in the house they were taking your side and i don't think there was anything wrong absolutely nothing wrong in me giving that listening ear to sammy angel i even spoke to you what are you talking about i spoke to you why to talk to just you in an argument guys angel was going at peace but i love the fact that peace stood at ground yes she wasn't backing down because of course it was all too familiar mm, angel would do something and then she would play the victim and she want people to back down for her but peace was not backing down at all yes but then Abraham moved on to asking sammy about what had actually happened exactly and sammy had actually given his own version of the story that it was actually angel that I started off the argument, it was Angel that I started insulting him, calling him all manner of names. Initially, he took it as a joke, but then when he saw that she was actually being serious, then he told himself, okay, since you want to catch Cruz, let's catch Cruz together. So when he said something, people were going to start laughing. And that was why I was asking the rest of the housemates, oh, why are you all laughing? But whenever Angel insulted him, she would vehemently do so. But when he said something, the rest of the housemates would laugh. That was what continuously infuriated Angel, yes. So it was like the same measure that Angel was insulting him, that he insulted her back. And then people jumped into conclusion that he had body shamed Angel. Meanwhile, it was actually Angel that started with the crazy heavy insult. And just as expected, Angel was being defensive that, oh, eh, after all, Queen talked on you. I kissed KV. I was playing my game. Why were you upset? And I'm like, now what, Shao? I think we have to kind of blame Coyote for this one because obviously 
when we don't see the start of an argument, there's bound to be a lot of misinterpretations. There's bound to be a lot of switching the narrative because at that point in time, guys, trust me, a lot of us, the viewers, we actually really believed that Sami was the one that actually first started the whole Wahala with Angel. And now we're hearing another side of the story, this time the full story. And even Angel sitting down there could not deny that that was exactly what happened. Ha! Now what? No, at this point, the conversation was almost derailing as Angel had automatically become assistant Ebuka. She was now the one questioning, you know, Peace, questioning Maria because she wanted answers. You know, even Ebuka got exasperated. He should have left them to argue and argue. But then Ebuka was able to call them to order. And then he went ahead to ask Angel how she felt, if she actually saw the clips, if she actually heard what was said about her. She said she heard everything. She heard them call her um, a slug. She heard them say that she had a smelly vagina, blah, blah. Blah, blah and then Ebuka had asked Maria you know how she felt Angel felt when she said that thing and Maria reiterated that she was not the one that actually said that Angel had a smelly vagina that it was actually the truth of their game that they were playing they were meant I don't know guys if you remember that game you know you whisper in someone's hair you say something and then if you don't want to say it you drink blah 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 so according to Maria it was Michael that said it now all this well <laughs> Michael was sitting down there quiet, looking at the floor. Dude did not want to say anything. But Maria said that it was Michael that said it. Michael had whispered it in her ears. And then when they were in um, the executive lounge, they had brought it up to talk about it because there were a lot of things that Angel was doing in the house, aside kissing the guys. Yes, when it came to task, when it came to chores in the house, Angel was always having one complaint or the other. She would say she has ulcer, she wants to sleep. She wasn't basically adding a lot of things to the house. In addition to that, Maria had also gone ahead to reiterate that that was her own perception about Angel. That was her opinion of Angel and it does not change and she's not going to apologize to Angel because she did not insult Angel or call Angel a prostitute. She only said what had been said during a game that was played. Now, Angel, you know, as a club back, was saying that or rather accusing maria of doing the exact same thing that she was doing in the house that the only thing maria was not doing was kissing all the guys in the house that she was playing her game that was her game she was there to have fun she was there to play her game so that was what she was doing and then she was saying that maria was busy flirting with michael and emmanuel and i'm like I don't understand. What we were seeing in the house is totally different from Angel, what Angel was actually thinking. Whereas the reverse was actually the case. Angel was the one that was literally flirting with almost all the guys in the house. Angel was the one that was flirting with Emmanuel. Emmanuel was also flirting with Angel in return. Yes, and Maria too stated that, listen, Emmanuel was coming to me. I was pointing and directing him back to Liko Rose. Liko Rose was my friend. And guys, that was a very, very hilarious moment because I'm thinking... Come, Angel, carry your crown for the biggest flirt of the season. Don't even transfer it to anybody. Now you get him. It's yours. Own it. Not Maria. Mm -mm. Maria was a lot of things in that house, but not a heavy flirt with all the guys in the house. And so Maria refused to change whatever she had said on that video about Angel. She kept on telling Ebuka that what she said is her opinion about angel she's not changing it she's not apologizing to angel she actually told angel i'm not even telling you sorry and that was the part where angel made that statement that okay since your opinion about me does not want to change my opinion about you is that you don't have sense <laughs> But you know what? Let's be very frank, guys. Let's be very frank, guys. Come on, let's let's give Maria some credit. Maria is very intelligent. At least she was one of the most intelligent housemates of the Shire Eye season. So please, no disrespect to Maria. Maria has sense. <laughs> Maria has sense. But let's also remember that that is Angel's opinion about Maria. Abby. Mm -hmm. So let's leave it at that. And then Ebuka moved on to ask Nini and guys. The way I was looking at Nini talking and lying. Hey! Jesus Christ. Guys, I was cold. I was freezing. Nini was literally changing the things that she had said about Angel. And guys, listen. When you listen to people's conversation, there's something called, you know, the mood, the tone of such a conversation. We all saw that conversation, guys. We heard what was said. And the energy that Nini was using, you know, like she was trying to portray on the reunion show tonight, that no angel, but I actually said I liked you. I said I liked you as a friend. Ah, guys, 
That wasn't the energy that Nini was displaying on that day. At all. And she's creating enemies for herself, but she doesn't know. For him to say that shit, he said up in the secret. You know, she's in the Did you think? Do you, know, do you know the funny thing about everybody in this house? I don't think she knows. As a matter of fact, Nini's mouth was running like a typewriter. Nini was owning the conversation. Yes, Nini was right. She had a point. We did not hear the conversation from the very, very, very beginning. Like it wasn't everything that we actually heard of that conversation. But we saw when the girls entered that executive lounge. We saw when they started drinking. We saw when they were sharing the money that Biggie had actually dropped for them in that executive lounge. And Nini's mouth was wagging. Maria's tongue was wagging. Nini said a lot without a tiny voice. <laughs> She actually said a lot. So she coming with the energy of a peacemaker towards Angel tonight. I said, no, Angel, darling. If you want more drama, come, let me give you all the clips so that you will rewatch. But you know what? We don't like violence over here, all right? Maybe we do a little bit. Yes. But listen, guys, Nini was just blatantly lying. I'm sorry, but Nini was lying. Mm -mm. She was lying. And then finally, Ebukana moved on to the Michael because Michael's name had been flying left, right, and center whilst all the arguments, all the banters was going on. And then Michael now revealed that it was actually Cross that answered that question because they had asked which of the females had the smelliest vagina in the house. And guys, for Cross to have provided that answer, we know that Cross and Angel, they had been messing around the biggest house a lot. They had been playing some very, very rough play in that house. They had been doing a lot of things. Even on one of those jacuzzi, Friday jacuzzi night parties, we had seen Cross, you know, putting finger inside Angel's coochie. Now, probably something that actually happened between Angel and Cross, for Cross to have that kind of information. And just as Michael rightly said, he has never been so close to Angel before, whilst even being in Biggie's house, to know how Angel's coochie smelt. Yes, and it's true, guys. You have to be very, very close to someone, you know, like very, very close, too close for comfort, to even really know, you know, the scent or the smell, whatever it was. So Michael had revealed that it was actually cross that had answered that question. He had whispered it in his ear, and he had also passed on the answer to Maria. So it wasn't like he was the one that said it. I said, Chai! Angel! All in a bit to play your game. See the way the person you gave that, you know, little access to you just spread your womanhood on international television. But, but you know what, guys? I don't know. I don't know why Cross was not there tonight. I didn't actually see Cross. I wish that Cross was actually there because I wanted, I really wanted Ebuka to ask him directly that Cross! How did you know that Angel's coochie was actually smelling? I want to see how he was going to answer that question. But then we'd have to wait to the next episode of um, the Big Brother Niger Shine Your Eye reunion, which is going to continue from next week, Monday. So, hey, tomorrow we will be having our FSWG Saturday YouTube live stream on this channel by 3 p.m. WAT. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to unpack. Yes. So ensure that you join us. Don't miss out. I'll see you guys on another video soon. Have an amazing night's rest. Bye.